Hello and welcome to yet another live session. Hope all of you are doing great and thank you so much for joining this session live. Now I'm going to talk about a very very powerful thing which has created wealth in the stock markets. Okay, so you might have seen past decade in India where a lot of top FMCG companies like Unilever, Colgate, Nestle, we had PNG, Hindustan Unilever, Gillette, Britannia and a lot of other proxy of consumption like Asian Paint, Spidilite all these companies created huge wealth right and in today's time and age also consumption is regarded as one of the top investment thesis or a mega trend for Indian subcontinent. So in today's session I'll be talking about a parallel consumption trend which is going on in front of us which is shaking the world and probably we are consuming that much more than what we have consumed all these things in the past. So if you are ready for this very very interesting session where we are going to talk about US investing and what are the different mega trends which you can think about investing and create a lot of wealth from it. So if you are ready for this just type ready in the comment box. Let's begin. Awesome thank you so much. So I was talking about consumption and uh, think about this okay think about this what are we consuming all day long think about where you are uh, spending most of your time and what are you consuming we are today's time and age consuming different things in terms of technology and data right be it facebook be it youtube which you are watching right now be it twitter be it uh, uber be it uh, shopping on amazon we are spending so much time on technology if you agree with this just type agree in the comment box just think about this how much time in a day you are spending on your mobile or laptop and consuming different stuff in terms of technology you might be eating food of uh, say ITC Gehu or you might be drinking some Pepsi drinks of uh, Varun beverages all these different things are very very tiny proportion compared to what we are consuming in terms of technology and data and that is where this mega trend we should not be ignoring and to give an example this is a very very interesting pick by uh, one of the investor Vishal Khandilwal I have taken this uh, from Safal Niveshak I have given credits also below the description but just see this picture you know this is where this picture un encompasses some of the multi baggers in India in the past decade it could be you know your AC companies maybe Voltas, Hitachi your uh, TV companies right like Z dish tv your uh, you know paper companies like navneet uh, your your toys like hanung toys uh, your footwear like relaxo bata liberty all these many many companies have created tremendous wealth in the past decade and continues to do so but now if you think about this picture think about what is shifting from this picture are we able to uh, control our ACs and fans through remote control and technology and chips inside it? Yes. Are we reading more books on Kindle and, and online than reading it physically? Are we playing more games or at least our kids are playing more games online than what they used to play outdoors? We are watching a lot of OTTs like Netflix and Prime Video instead of all the past uh, ZTV and all those things and even that is embedded in, inside all of these OTT platforms. And uh, we are shopping more and more from uh, platforms like Amazon, right? And even, even the kind of devices, right? So say iPhone is, is again, you know, device which is giving that technology to us and it has platform like iOS and then you have Android phone from Google which is again a technology platform which is enabling all these connections. So if you think about it it's like a very very big mega trend that is going in front of us and in my view we should not ignore this big mega trend if you want to create massive wealth for future. Now think about this like how to take exposure in all these tech companies right be it uh, Amazon of the world be it Apple which is producing iPhone it could be uh, you know your uh, Google which we are searching every single day it could be Twitter it could be uh, you know YouTube which is again a company incorporated within YouTube uh, sorry within Google and so many different technology companies and now we are also moving towards world of AI and so many AI companies are getting emerged in, uh, in the space which is disrupting the entire world. So think about this, how to 
play this technology mega trend right from manufacturing to our personal consumption to whatever you know research is being done to whatever job creation in future are going to happen in ai right how to think about this and how to play this mega trend and the answer to this is only one the answer to this is ride the companies which are innovating at a very fast scale globally and disrupting the world and majority of these companies fortunately or unfortunately are originating from us of course there are a lot of indian companies which are helping these companies and and uh, you know are important part of the value chain they might also create wealth but if you want to play this entire mega trend in a focused way i think us is is one of the most easiest and probably relatively safer route compared to other countries where these kind of innovations are happening for indian audience to invest now you might say vivek then how to go about it should i go and purchase all these direct stocks of google nvidia and netflix and you know zoom and all these companies the answer is no okay let me tell you why we should not invest in direct us stocks now i'm not saying there is no technology available now there is uh you know technology available there are brokers who have opened up account in us and they provide these facilities like ind money and a lot of these platforms are there and again i am not here to give you any you know commercial out of it right so this video is not sponsored by any of these platforms even whatever uh, you know sources i'll be sharing with you these are all things which i am doing i have full skin in the game i am not uh, you know advertising any of these platforms whether on a right side or a wrong side i'm giving my perspective okay so there there could be good apps or good ways in which you can invest in direct stocks but i'll tell you why we should not be investing directly into us stocks the first thing is taxation filing right there is a separate filing which you need to do in your tax returns and if you are not careful again there could be issues in your tax filing the second is there are 3000 plus companies in india right we are doing so much of research in indian companies now additional so many thousands of companies in us are we capable of doing that kind of research ourselves and find out those really good companies which are which are you know worth investing and third recently you know there is a tcs amendment that has happened that is tax collected at source so anything which you are putting outside india probably you know there could be uh, tcs which can be levied and and you might again have to take take it as a refund and there are a lot of complications that has arrived inside this entire journey and again you know you don't know the stability of these brokers whether they are really stable or not they have they are technically very sound or not that is something again is a additional layer because these things are just recently emerging so that is where you know i believe that we should uh, not invest in us directly another perspective is we don't need to invest like 100% of our money in us us investing should be used as a play on technology a play on diversification and some portion of our portfolio we can you put it into us investing so for for example what i am doing is in my entire core portfolio 10% of uh, technology play i am assigning to nasdaq 100 okay now let's go deeper into it can i share with all of you a detailed uh, you know walk through of what and how of us investing just type bio bio is bring it on and let me share you share with you a presentation which is not again my it is a source from motila loswal fund of fund and excess fund of fund again i am not promoting these mutual funds this is what is a good publicly available information so i am sharing with all of you and it is again uh, you know thanks to both of these uh, funds we have been able to get this data point okay so i'll share all these information with all of you meanwhile you know as i was as i was speaking for technology i just created recently a video on investing with chat gpt so how you can use ai and chat gpt to take your investing decisions and to make your investing journey much faster and efficient if you not watch this go and check it out later this is a very very powerful video you should must watch and i've given a template and prompts also which you can use for your uh journey okay so let me share the screen and let me go through the powerpoint okay so this is the powerpoint uh, from you know motila loswal and uh, excess mutual fund i'll just run you through step by step so the first very important case for uh, nasdaq 100 and let me first in fact get to you why 
you know, NASDAQ 100 is uh, important and why it gives you technology play. So first it is the 100 largest non-financial company. So anything which is a non-financial company, top 100 largest company, it gives you exposure. So although majority of these companies are technology play, I'll tell you there are some more elements which you get exposure to. Second, very important, it is giving you global exposure. And I'll explain to you how it is giving not just US exposure, but exposure across the globe and how you can diversify your portfolio using this NASDAQ 100. And this is a portfolio of company which are high growth company. These companies, you know, because these are platform businesses, they grow very fast. And in fact, I wrote an entire thread on my Twitter. If you are not gone through it, you should go through this, uh, you know, entire Twitter thread where I've explained what is these kind of businesses, how these are asset light, how these are scalable businesses and how they can grow much faster. So I'm sharing the link in the description also. I've shared in the chat also. Please go through this thread later on. It will give you a lot of insights in terms of how you can make a better understanding of these businesses. Okay. And finally, you know, it will give you exposure to some of the new sectors which are emerging like AI. Okay. So that is what is uh, the overall theme. Again, thanks to, you know, Xs and Motila Loswal, I've got all these information from their brochures. Now think about this. And again, this is data as of, I think, September or October 2022. So, so this might not be 100% accurate, but it's almost accurate. We have not been like too much uh, far from that era. Now think about this. What is the constituent of NASDAQ 100? So the technology, IT play is 50%. Discretionary consumption is 16%. Communication, like Cisco kind of company, is 16%. Healthcare is 6%. Industrial is 3%. And utilities is 1%. So majority of them is actually technology, right? Information technology. And who, what are the top holdings? You get exposure to Apple. You get exposure to Microsoft. You get exposure to Amazon, you get exposure to Tesla, you get exposure to Google or Alphabet, you get exposure to Facebook or Meta and a lot of interesting companies like Nvidia and PepsiCo and Costco which are again very good consumption story in the United States. And if you see overall the weightage, right, top 5 to 6 companies command around 40 to 50 percent of the weightage, right. So you still are concentrated at the same time you are diversified in the tail. So that is the first advantage. The second thing which we are going to understand is how it is giving you global exposure. I was telling you, right, this is not just the US play we are doing. Because all these giants, although, you know, they are based out of US, they are operating out of US, but they are getting revenue from different countries across the world. So you can see like, uh, you know, from US, they are getting 50% of re revenue. Emerging Asia, like countries like India, they are getting 17% of revenue. Eurozone, they are getting 10% of revenue. Asia developed, they are getting some 5% of revenue. Then Japan, UK, Latin America, emerging Europe, Canada, Australia, Middle East, Africa. Across the globe, they are getting revenue. So the point is, if you think about Indian companies like Titan or Asian Paints or Pedilite, they are highly concentrated in terms of their revenue streams inside India. Now, these companies, although they are platform based out of US, it is having global exposure. So if today, you know, something happens in one of the country, it will not get impacted that much how, you know, a concentrated uh, revenue stream is getting impacted. So if this diversification element is clear, just type super clear in the comment box, right? So one, it gives you a diversification across the revenue stream. It also gives you diversification across underlying different sectors. So that is another advantage. Now let's go deeper and try to understand what is next for us. Now this is what is the future, right? When we are investing, we always think about future. How world is moving forward? Which all are the companies who are putting money and R&D and thinking about future growth? And there we can again think about sectors like you know, future mobility, AI, you know, automated cars, all these things are the global themes which are happening in front of us. Now, how to take advantage of all these different future mega trends that are coming to us? And again, this is where, you know, the chart helps us. 86% of index weight, okay, 86% of NASDAQ 100 index weight 
is engaged into these disruptive technologies. So if you like disruption and if you think world is getting disrupted, this is the space to be in. Right? So if you think about AI and big data, 63% of companies inside this nest egg 100 is doing some kind of work around it. If you think about robotics, around 40% of the companies are doing work around it. If you think about the biotech, there are like 4% of companies doing work around it. Cyber security, 4% of them. Semiconductors, right, which is everywhere, 16% of the company. If you think about internet economy and 5G, around 30% kind of company. If you think about streaming, 30% of the companies, right? So actually, this is like the consumption play if you think about it. If you didn't knew this, just type DN in the comment box. This is why, you know, going deeper into the understanding of underlying investment thesis is very, very important. When people teach about uh, US investing, they just talk superficially. You know, there are all tech companies and there are these platform where you can buy stocks and these are top 10 stocks and all those things. No, the real crux is to think in terms of mega trends, to think on, about where the future growth is coming up. Okay, so if this is making sense, just type MS in the comment box and I'll give you some study resources also around it, how you can develop your knowledge in a deeper way around this so that this is becoming very, very powerful for all of you. Okay, now let's come to the next one. Research and development, right? Most of these companies are actually, you know, focusing on IP. See, earlier all these industries used to have assets. What were these assets? It could be plants, it could be machinery, it could be factories. And those were the key assets of all the industrial age companies. Today's time and age, what is the real asset? Today's time and age, the real asset is intellectual property, patents, right? And, and how you can use those patents to deter your competition and create monopolies. There are a lot of books written on this. I'll just share the list with all of you, which uh, you guys can read. Okay, I was talking about resources. So let me just share some of these resources. So there are a couple of books which are available. One book is called Platform Revolution. The second is called Matchmakers. Third is called Modern Monopolies. And uh, fourth is Business of Platforms. I would highly recommend to at least read one of these books. Okay, I'll give you the link also. Uh, in the description as well as you can note this down you can go to technofunda.co slash platforms and you can actually read all these books actually these companies are creating modern monopolies okay because they are protected with patents and they do a lot of R&D that can disrupt the entire world okay so that is the key crux of this slide also that they are doing a lot of R&Ds the amount of you know, percentage of sales which is going into R&D for NASDAQ 100 is almost, you know, three to four times that of S&P 500 companies. So if you want to bet on innovation, if you want to bet on R&D, if you want to bet on patents, again, that is the reason NASDAQ 100 versus S&P 500. So let me explain you uh, why, you know, this versus S&P 500 or another index, right? So one, it is tech focused. Majority of 50% uh, plus exposure is tech. Global diversification, as I mentioned, and you are riding innovation. So these are the prominent three reasons why we should not go with S&P 500 or other indices and go with NASDAQ 100. Again, this is my personal view. You might have a different investment thesis, but hope it help you in understanding the overall crux. Now, there is much more in terms of returns also. Do you want to know the return profile and what kind of compounding magic you can do from this entire investing journey? Just type yes in the comment box. So we are still halfway through. There is a lot of interesting points that are going to come through, through your way. So this is the returns profile. So if you see, and this is the NASDAQ 100 USD return profile. Okay, this is not INR uh, return profile, remember. Now see this, 2013, 37% return. 2014, 19%, 15, 10%, then 16, 7%, 2017, 33%, 2018 was flat, next year, 39%, 2020, 49%, COVID year, okay, 21, 28%, and this year, like in 2022, last year, uh, it was undergoing recession and there was a bit of fall, now again, it has recovered as we speak, but this is the kind of return profile it has generated in USD. Now, do you want to understand how this translates to Indian uh, returns? 
because remember rupee depreciates every year right so rupee versus dollar depreciates generally 6 to 7 percent i'm not saying it will always continue but till now you know we have seen that trend broadly happening and if we assume that happens in future also probably these kind of returns may also be you know generated in future also that is again you know i'm not telling it will happen 100 percent but most likely it might happen now see this this is one of the most important table table which will uh, uh, give you an idea okay now before that let me take very very important question so chirag pandya is saying with us on the brink of recession is it right time to invest so this stock you know just see what us has done from its 1929 recession itself right actually it has gone multifold it has gone multifold so if you are really focusing on long term these things are actually you know some of the advantages point and i'll tell you how you can uh, even take advantage of this okay so let me share with you one of the tweet which i got today itself while we speak okay so let me share this uh, ex excerpt with you so that you can understand so i got a, a you know i just wrote a twitter uh, you know reply over here and one of the fund manager kalpan parekh is a, also a good well wisher he was actually discussing one of these things so even if you have put it money in the peak of uh, you know euphoria in 1929 before the big crash that has happened okay your uh, 100 dollar invested has become 1.8 million growth of 18000 times okay will take this on any day okay and even if you have invested in peak of 1929 and no immediate returns for almost two decades you would have made this kind of wealth okay so this is where you know actually you know it's a good sign and if you think about recession even if recession happens right we, we are not going to stop consuming technology right it it can be into a lot of other discretionary things so the point is uh, in terms of returns right where we were in terms of return now think about this 2013 these these are all returns in inr terms nasdaq 100 54 percent snp 49 percent nifty 8 percent 2014 Nasdaq 100 22 percent, S&P 19 percent, Nifty 32 percent. In this case, Nifty has outperformed. Then 15, it is 15 percent, Nifty is minus 3 percent. 16, it is 10 percent, Nifty is 4 percent. 17, 24 percent, Nifty is 30 percent. This again, one more time, it has outperformed. Then 18, 9 percent, Nifty is 4 percent. 19, 42 percent, Nifty is 13 percent. 20 52 percent nifty is 16 percent 21 30 percent nifty is 25 percent so are you able to understand what kind of alpha in terms of compounding nasdaq 100 is doing versus s p 500 and nifty if this was mind-blowing just type mb in the comment box right so one it provides you diversification Second very important thing, generally, you know, over past data, again, I'm not sure of future, nobody knows what is future, but it has compounded much better. You know, it can, it has actually compounded around 25% CAGR for last 10 to 15 years if you go to the data in INR terms. So that means you can do 10x in 10 years if this compounding continues. And I don't have any reasonable reason why it might not continue but let's see how it goes okay so this is again one more reason for uh, thinking about us market and this is what the difference in compounding means so the bottom line is uh, you know our nifty over a period of time of compounding and the top line is nasdaq 100 this is the kind of huge difference it creates in terms of your compounding journey when you are uh, you know for so many years invested into nasdaq 100 instead of nifty again i'm not saying you should go all in nifty or nasdaq 100 because there, there are again currency risk and a lot of other regulatory risk that might come up and concentrated portfolio can uh, concentrate those risks also so i i believe that it should be used as a tool of diversification rather than too much of concentration that is again your choice but this is what i am doing in my own personal journey Another very important point is this is the valuation metrics again thanks to Motila Loswal and Excess Mutual Fund. If you see over a period of time 
unlike Indian market, the kind of price to earnings multiple have been very very reasonable from the kind of quality of these companies. So you can see the top line of uh, price to earnings ratio. It does range between you know 18 to 22, 23 kind of uh, range. If you see the fundamentals, see the kind of gross margin, 47% kind of growth margin, gross margin. On an average 40 to 42 percent operating margins on an average 17 percent operating margins think about this how many indian companies you see these kind of margins profit margins 12 to 14 percent profit margins of these companies and return on equities last two three years cross 30 percent roes basically these are insanely profitable asset light businesses which over a period of time can scale very very fast initially they put into technology and R&D and, and patents and all those things but once they start scaling it can go crazy so if this was again mind-blowing just type mind-blowing in the comment box some of these data points you know when you read these are just like crazy data points right and and that tells us the power of investing in US at least from the perspective of diversification. Now, if you are not liked this video so far, just like it. And if you are not subscribed to ch this channel, just subscribe to this channel so that you can see a lot of these kind of powerful stuff uh, and we can interact and discuss a lot of these things on this uh, platform, which is again based out of US Alphabet YouTube. Okay, so just hit a like button if you are liking it so far. And thank you so much for doing that. Now let's go deeper, okay? Are you all ready to spend another five minutes to understand the crux of why US investing, okay? So let me go deeper and let's uh, go for the diversification, right? So versus Nifty, the correlation, right? When Nifty goes up, Nasdaq 100 goes up, when Nifty goes up, down or Nasdaq 100 goes down, what is the correlation? Only 22% of correlation. Right, So sometimes Nasdaq can fall, Nifty can go up, only 22% of the time they are going in sync. So that way also you get diversification benefit. Again, this data keeps changing from time to time. But uh, you know, as of this presentation, whenever this was prepared, this is the kind of correlation which is there. Okay. Now, in terms of exposure to financial sector, if you see, think about S&P 500, if you think about Nifty, it is heavily focused on financials, your ICICA, HDFC, Cortex of the world, right? But when you think about uh, NASDAQ 100, it is detached from financials, right? So if there is any financial crisis or banking crisis that happens, and generally most of the crisis happen around these sectors, you are still protected, right? So if layman crisis kind of things happen, SNP will get affected, but NASDAQ 100 will not get so much affected. Of course, there will be some kind of correlation still, but then it will not get affected. And this is what it is showing, right? In, in biggest of the biggest global financial crisis, it has been able to, you know, stand still. And immediately next year, it has actually bounced back heavily. That is what this slide is saying. And this is the crux of uh, different points which we have discussed, right? So why? Uh, invest in uh, US first, it gives you exposure to in international market. It gives you access to companies with very strong fundamentals and some of these innovators which are disrupting the entire world. It is hedge against INR because if rupee depreciates, you get better returns, right? So it, it is a hedge against U rupee depreciation also. And it gives uh, access to the companies which are nowhere present in India. Right? So think about Netflix or Google or Amazons or Tesla of the world. You, you try, try to find it hard, you will not get these kind of companies in India at least as of now. Okay, In future, who knows. But that is the reason, again, it's a very good bet. And again, it provides a lot of diversification to your portfolio. So that is broadly what is investment thesis. Now, how to invest in these kind of companies, right? So there are multiple uh, fund of fund which is available. So what these fund of fund does, there are ETFs on NASDAQ 100, okay? So there is NASDAQ 100 index. There is an ETF which takes exposure into these, uh, you know, NASDAQ 100 units. And there is a fund on the top of this. So they keep on buying and selling these ETFs. So that is the ideal way in my view to take exposure rather than directly investing in ETF because there is some kind of tracking error and liquidity issue at times. So fund of fund is a better way to play this entire theme in my view. Again, personally, I have initially I bought Motila Loswal fund of fund then because of regulation, because of the size, there was a you know, limit in terms of how much money they can get in. So it was paused. 
then I bought Kotak uh, Nasdaq 100 fund of fund that got post and then recently off late I'm buying Navi Nasdaq 100 fund of fund but there are multiple such options so I think X is, ha is having Nasdaq 100 fund of fund Navi is having Nasdaq 100 fund of fund uh, Motilal Oswal is having and uh, Kotak is also having and I'm sure other also if you explore you might get a direct or indirect some of these exposure to Nasdaq 100 even ICICI I think has uh, that kind of exposure but again this is not a promotional uh, thing this is just uh, what I am doing two factors you should watch out for when you are selecting a fund of fund one what is the expense ratio ideally as far as I remember the expense ratio is around 0.3 to 0.5 percent so the lower the expense ratio the better it is right and second you should think about size so if the size is big enough generally the liquidity will be better and uh, your relatively the fees will also generally come down so these are the two criteria you should uh, look for but sometimes with a size there could be restriction in terms of new addition of the money and you can switch between different funds if that restriction comes in there is no restriction in terms of pulling out your money okay so that is not a concern so hope this uh, video was useful and you learned a lot of important and powerful things uh, why to invest in us now what I do personally is I lay over my technical analysis knowledge on the top of it. So what I do is I use these kind of long term charts to invest and that also helps me protect in these kind of you know drawdowns. So like in, in uh, 2022 there was a big fall in uh, US market and I could have protected myself from these kind of falls by having exit strategy. So that is what I do personally. Uh, I blend technicals with fundamentals to make a better investment decision. So if uh, Nasdaq 100 would have given a compounded return of 25%, I can bump up that return by laying over such technical analysis tools on the top of it. Okay, so that is what uh, uh, I have been doing in my journey, but hope this entire uh, video is useful. You can even do plain vanilla fund of fund and ride it. Uh, but if you lay it over with uh, these kind of tools, it will be much more useful. Okay. And if you have not watched my video on platform businesses, like how these businesses are really powerful and shifting and changing the world, go and check it out. Uh, search for Vivek Mashrani platform businesses. It has gone got more than 35,000 views and uh, it is just awesome. Just watch this. You will get uh, crazy when you learn about what is shifting this entire world and how this entire world is moving. So that's it from my end. If you have any questions, uh, uh, let me know. Yeah, so this is very, very important question. Uh, so S. Chatterjee is saying, excellent analysis. Isn't the failure rate or obsolescence very high in technology stocks? Absolutely bang on. And that is the reason I don't generally like to invest directly in the US stocks. Because who knows, right? Tomorrow there is a big disruption by the, its own competitor and this guy is disrupted and getting out of the business. But when you take exposure to the index, the strongest company gets in, the weak companies get out. So it automatically makes sure that you are riding your winners and you are cutting down your losers. That is the most important benefit of investing in index, be it Nasdaq 100 or any other index. Okay. So like right now, Apple is one of the top companies and, and because it is top company, it is having almost highest weight in Nasdaq 100 also. But tomorrow, if Apple becomes like redundant, it might get out of Nasdaq 100 also. Hopefully it will not happen. But that is how, uh, you know, index investing is very, very powerful. Okay. So uh, Sanjay is saying, you know, any views on Motilal, Oswal, N100. So I am holding Motilal, Oswal. I think they in between uh, stopped the new fund flow. But recently I am putting money into Navi. All of these are almost equal in terms of expense ratio. Uh, only thing is you need to see which funds are allowing you to invest otherwise pretty much almost all of them are almost on similar lines they are having exact same exposure of nasdaq 100 okay just expense ratio and size and whether they are allowing you to put money those are the only thing three things you should be checking there okay awesome so great guys thank you so much if you like this video please share it with your uh, fellow investors and uh, uh, make sure you hit a like button and we'll keep on learning such kind of things together. And uh, that's it. I think uh, all the best in your investing journey. And if you want to learn some of these strategies, how I do, I've also shared a link of a masterclass below this video. So you can check it out and learn how you can build investing systems around these kind of NASDAQ 100 ind uh, indices also. 
and can compound better in your journey. Thank you so much. Uh, you can, yeah, Kripa is saying how to invest. Okay, thank you so much for asking this. So how to invest, I gave you the names of the fund, but you can use any of the platform which you like. I am personally right now, uh, you know, investing through Zero Duck Coins because that is a direct mutual fund platform. So you can go to technofunda.co slash Zero Da, open an account there, go to, uh, you know, coin platform which is out there and, and you can invest. There are a lot of other, uh, you know, platform also which are available in the market. So anywhere where you can buy mutual fund, you can buy all these funds which I have mentioned. Okay. Superb. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, somebody from Facebook has posted. Thank you so much for your lovely wishes. And great. Thank you so much, guys, for being with me till the end. We will uh, stay connected and let's uh, get more and more this kind of insights together and let's learn in this journey.